I forgot. Amen. Uh, <clears throat> as uh, we get ready to get started, my name is Deacon Gould. I am the superintendent here at Pray Temple of Sunday School. And uh, we are still, you still have time to make it here at 30, 13121 Woodford Road. We'd love to have you here with us. Amen. Welcome everyone that's online and everyone that's here <clears throat> with us in the sanctuary. Uh, today's lesson, the title is The Death of Nadab and Abihu, coming out of the book of Leviticus, chapter 10, verses 1 through 7. And the place is the plain before Mount Sinai, and the time is 1445 B.C. And the, and the <clears throat> golden text is, Serve the Lord with fear and rejoice with trembling, Psalms 2 and 11. And the lesson outline is the fire of the Lord, Leviticus 10, 1 through 3. And <clears throat> our service to the Lord, Leviticus 10, verses 4 and 5. And the call of the Lord, Leviticus 10, 6 and 7. And today's aim fact is to learn important aspects of God's holiness from the negative examples of Aaron's son, and the principle to note numerous potential consequences of disregarding God's holiness and failing to obey his command. And the application to ensure that our personal holiness is complete, is in complete alignment with the principles of scriptures and that we are serving the Lord in a manner that he desires. And last week the scripture was the lesson was on Aaron and his sons was ordained. And this week, scripture, we go from uh, joyful to sorrow. Amen. <clears throat> and as we said in scripture, when we don't do what God asks us to do, there are gonna, there could be severe consequences. Amen. And and what I like to do here is I I'll read the, the scripture and we'll talk about it because I it was a very good lesson to read. And <clears throat> I'll read verses one through three. And it says, And Nadab and Abihu, the sons of Aaron, took either of them his senses and put fire, fire there and, and put incense thereon and offered strange fire before the Lord, which he commanded them not. <laughs> Amen. Amen. And there went out fire from the Lord and devoured them, and they died before the Lord. Yeah. Amen. Let me get to verse 3 here. And it says, Then Moses said unto Aaron, This is that the Lord spake, saying, I will be sanctified in them that come near me, and before all the peoples I will be glorified. And Aaron held his peace. Amen. And so when I was reading it, you know, as I was reading this uh, Sunday school lesson, last week, as you know, during the ordination for uh, Aaron and his son, everything was detailed. Everything was laid out exactly what you have to do, there will be no misunderstanding. And so we see what Aaron's sons did. They decided to do something that they want to do. How dangerous it is for us to start doing things our way instead of doing it the Lord's way. Amen. And so <clears throat> there are consequences. And you see what, in, any comments on verse 1 right quick. I know someone had something to say. Deacon Cunningham, put your mic, sir. The Lord had told them guys what he wanted them to do, and they had been ordained to do exactly what the Lord wanted them to do, but yet and still, they decided they wanted to do it their way. They wanted to worship the Lord the way they wanted to do it, and you can't do that. You have to worship the Lord the way the Lord wants you to do it. Amen. Very good. The Lord had given them specific structure. This, I think it read where it said that they had was actually with 70 elders. So they had a lot of experience and, and a lot of a, a lot of people to go to. Same with us. If we run into some situation, we can <clears throat> we will run into it. We will actually we can go to our pastor or someone to get the right information that we need. But when we try to do things on our own, then disaster set it. And that's what happened. <clears throat> in in verse 2. And there it says that well, when, you, when I was reading it, there went out a fire from the Lord. And said so when they were uh, first was ordained, 
A fry came from heaven is to show Moses, to show Aaron that it's appreciation that the place was holy. So when we read this in, ver in verse number two, this was not from the Lord. Amen. And this was on their own. Mm -hmm. And as I read it, sometimes we think, uh, I'm reading the lesson where sometimes people think that they can do some good thing mm -hmm. and do some bad thing. Mm -hmm. And it will equal out, it will balance out, and everything will be out. Or I can do almost everything right, mm -hmm. and then this over here, I can do what I want to do. Right. And, the, and the good will outweigh the bad. Amen. As you can see what happened here, there was no uh, punishment. It was immediately consumed. Right. Mm -hmm. God is holy. Yeah. And so when we start to decide to do things that are unholy, <laughs> The consequences come. And I believe that we think, I talked to someone yesterday after we finished here at the church, they, they, they think everything it will be okay, you know, as long as we just keep repenting. You know, like, you know, every time I do something, I go repent. I know I'm going to do it. And so we see here, there was no time to repent. Right. Amen. <laughs> Any comments on that verse 2, Pastor Brown? Yes, praise him. On verse 2, he talks about uh, that God said immediate um, ju uh, judgment upon them. Because uh, remember, the fire represented the presence of God. And they offered something that was different than what God required. And when they did that, and they knew what God required, and they were always around them, they still decided to do it on their, on their own. And that's when God decided to send forth swift justice. And we don't know. If God's going to judge us quickly or slowly, we don't know. We just we we but 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 judgment does come, and it happened very quickly for these two young men, and the Bible says, and they died before the Lord because they did not honor God uh, in the eyes of the people, Amen. I sanctify God in the eyes of the people, Amen. Amen. I I like I, I saw you, Sister Queen. I like what Pastor said that. That, that we don't know how it's going to come or when it's going to come when we don't do what the Lord asked. He says the last of that verse too is that they died before the Lord. Yeah. And so and when we don't do what God asked us to do, sometimes we think because we get away with things that, you know, we, we didn't get away. We didn't get away. They think that, well, you know, I got away with it. God's not going to do anything. But we see instantly here there was no warning. Sister Queen. Okay, I was also say that um, he has to use them as an example to let the people know that he meant what he said and um, to put fear in their lives so that they would uh, do what required. Amen. Said, so the Queen said it has to be utilized as an example, you know, to let them know that he was serious about what he said. There were specific instructions laid out. There was no excuses exactly what he wanted to do. He had 70 elders there. If you had any questions, you could go to them. So you had all the resources and <clears throat> we decided to do things our way. Sort of like the pastor tell us don't do something with you. You know, they said, I read it, the book said, we're sitting there listening to him. Yeah, I heard you, but when we walk out the door, I said, but I'm going to do it this way. Help us, Lord. And think that everything is going to be okay. Help us, Jesus. And verse 3, uh, thank you, Sister Queen, for that. In verse 3, I think it says that, Then Moses said unto Aaron, This is the Lord that spake, saying, I will be sanctified of them that come near me, and before all the people I will be glorified. And Aaron held his peace. Amen? Amen. So, I was reading it, uh, you know, it's, it's kind of hard to hold your peace when your family members or pass away right before you ask. But these were the instructions that Aaron then was given. And when I was reading it, that they had to continue on with doing the things of God. Amen. And so regardless of what happened, don't feel sorry for it. I, I like when we say sometimes, it could have been us. So I am not going to be sitting here trying to speculate what happened and why it happened. One thing is he saved me. Any comments on verse 3? Sister Queen. I was just thinking, too, and this is, you know, 
we do think, and you know, it's glory to God make us think, that um, I was wondering if Aaron saw them doing what they were doing and didn't say anything, and, um, and maybe that's why God told him, you know, um, what, what, told him what he told him, and he had to hold his peace because he knows it was wrong and he didn't do anything about it. So I'm just wondering if he knew this and didn't say anything. Well, I didn't read what he said he knew it, but I did know that he that, that he was served. It was a holiness, and so he was the only one to bow fire down from heaven. And so when we do things with incense and everything, it was disrespectful to the Lord and also disobedient. Mm -hmm. And so, like you had mentioned earlier, there was going to be an example made out of you because we already knew. I think sometimes it says when pastors preach it, sometimes it says that we're going to be held more accountable. It's talking about the Christians that we know better mm -hmm. and we decide to do it a different way. Pastor, you have any comments on that? Well, he says right here why he did it. He said that uh, uh, say, I will be what? Sanctified mm -hmm. in them that come nigh to me and before all the people I will be glorified. So what happened was is that they sanctified means that he's set apart yeah. God is not common we have made God so common in our day mm -hmm. we have, you know we've made him so common like hey God how you doing we know that he you know Abraham let me use my mic here we made him so common hey God how you doing blah 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 yes we understand that but God is still set apart he's set so far away from us <laughs> we, we don't even we wouldn't even know who he was and he didn't tell us who he was and, and we and we freak and you know and this time he's trying to let them know hey you can't just do what you want to do and, and expect it to be okay and today too many people like to like to twist I'm gonna give you one scripture that people like to use come as you are ah, amen now you tell me where that is between the books of Genesis and Revelation if they come one come all I think it don't say come as you are amen it says whosoever will yep. let him come yeah. amen. that's different. That's completely different. I'm gonna come. I'm just gonna come. I'm just gonna stroll into God and see God. Like, okay, go ahead and stroll into the presence. Go try, try to get across the gate at the White House. Come as you are and see what happens to you. Amen. Try to go someplace else. Amen. This place right now. You go if you drive down the wrong road. There are gonna be some MPs out there with with, with M16s pointing at, at your head. You go ahead and come as you are. Amen. I like what Pastor said. He said you can't cover it up. He said if you come, I, I, I remember when I went to Washington, D.C. to the VA and I made the wrong turn. Uh -oh. and, and I think I know these people who stand in front of me with these guns pointing. And I was trying to ask for direction and they kept saying, if you ain't got time for direction, you, you got to get out of here. Because we got orders to kill. You two, you the past. You got too far here. Mm -hmm. And so that's a very good point. We so, cannot come any way we want to. Amen. The, and also, he says that 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 that, that God God said <laughs> said God said that when they did this, they took glory from Him. Mm -hmm. And God shares a lot of things: His love, His kindness, His sweetness, His blessing, His favor. But He don't share His glory. Amen. And and what He was trying to do is that He's trying to establish that there's a difference between the clean and the unclean and the holy. And the unholy, and that has not changed with God. And we have to remember that that we just can't we just can't do you know as we feel we want to do. Especially watch this, especially when we've been put in place by God. Uh -oh. These brothers yeah. been on these guys. Remember last week we talked about they were ordained, they were oh, put yeah. in place mm -hmm. that God set them. Mm -hmm. So you know that's like that's like uh, you going in Mama's uh, china cabinet and you want a bowl of cereal and you go in there and get one of them good dishes and eat your bowl of your common bowl of cereal. You go ahead and do that. And let mama come out the kitchen and come out the room and see you. Amen. Out here, out here Amen. China. You gonna you gonna suffer the wrath of mama. Amen. <laughs> and, Amen. And, and, and we can respect mama. How much more should do we need to respect what God has called us to do? Amen. A very good point. Now, we just can't come to the Lord any way we want to, and we can't do anything we want to. For everyone that just joined us coming in, we're out in the book of Leviticus, chapter 10. And right now we're on verse 3 and we get ready to go through <laughs> verse 4. Uh, verse number 4, it says, And Moses called Mishael and Elisan and the son of Uzziah, the son of Aaron, and said unto them, Come near, carry your brethren from before the sanctuary out of the camp. Now I'm like Dick and Mary. I got a question. 
Why could not Aaron's other two sons do this? And one, I read. I got I got passed as a backup too. <laughs> uh, Deacon Cunningham. Yes, uh, those those uh, other guys they could couldn't do that because they was ordained, so they they couldn't go in the town. Anyone else? I think we all went there. I'm like I'm getting good at this now. Uh, anyone else? Well, as I was reading it, it said that. They could not touch anything that was unclean. And so they were unclean. And so that means the other priests would not be able to carry out their duty because you touch anything unclean. You had to go, and I would guess we call it uh, seven days, they had to go and <coughs> get clean for seven days. So they wouldn't be able to carry out their duty. And so that's why he chose the other one to do a very good point, Deacon uh, <clears throat> Cunningham. They were ordained, and ordained, as Pastor said, when we are put in certain positions, we are held to a higher level of standards. Amen. And there are things that we are expected to do. Amen. Amen. And so that, that, that would sum up. Any comments on that? Verse 5, it says, though they went near and carried them in their coats out of the camp, as Moses had said. Amen. But they were, they did, they continued to do the things that <clears throat> they were instructed to do. Amen. And that's what we have to do. You know, uh, I think verse 6 is going to say it, but you know, when we're given instructions to do things, and God does not it may not make sense to us, you know, but we have to continue to be obedient and do. But and so Moses was letting them know these words here are from God. Amen. Amen. He said, verse six, that Moses said unto Aaron and to Eleazar, Uncle Elamar, his son, uncover your, uncover not your head, neither rent your clothes, lest you die, lest wrath come upon all the people. But let your brethren, the whole house of Israel, be well and burning with the Lord has kindled. In other words, I think if in the Bible, in other words, there will be no sorrow. Amen. Someone else in the Bible was told not to mourn their wives. Who was it? Bible scholar? I, 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 Ezekiel. Remember when his wife passed away? They told him that you're not to mourn. <laughs> Your wife. And so if you look back at things like this, when you lose a loved one and you've been given instruction not to mourn and not to do this and not to do that, it, it, it is a tough situation to be in. But we, I believe they had already saw what had happened to Aaron's two sons. And so, you know, if we get out of hand here, then we could be next. Amen. Pastor Brown. Amen. <clears throat> We, we should not have to wait till we see somebody stretched out in front of the church before we get the message that we need to treat the Lord right. And I, and, I, and I use those words carefully. Treat the Lord right. Show the Lord the respect that's due his name. Worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. We're sinful. We're sinful. We're born in sin. Shape of iniquity. We are saved by grace through faith. We are washed by the blood of Jesus Christ. But all those good things that God has done for us, we still got to respect the name of the Lord. Amen. And we still have to show him uh, a great, great respect and great kindness. And uh, 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 that is what he's talking about here. Amen. And he, and he did this because this is what the Lord said. He showed them, he was showing them, uh, Sister Quinn said, they, they had they had to be used as, as an example. But God forbid it's us who's that, that example. And uh, uh, you just want to let them know he's serious about this. Because after this, you know, uh, they, they straighten up for a little while. <laughs> but, you know, we see here that God is serious about being who he is and saying, declaring and respecting who he is. Amen. I, I like what Pastor Brown said that we shouldn't have to wait till someone is stretched out before us before. We realize we got to serve. We have to serve the Lord 
each and every day. Because he said we're shaped in, we're, we're sinful nation. But, you know, sometimes you see people when they have a close call, they'll say, I gotta go to church tomorrow. <laughs> yeah. And I'm saying to myself, wow. And then they get in the line and the pastor pray for them and they say, you know, that prayer the pastor prayed for me really worked. And I'll see you next Sunday. Okay, I'll see you next Sunday. And then next time you don't see it. <laughs> and so, you know, and then if you see them again, you know, the Bible says judgment's not ours, but we don't judge people. You say, well, they're here again, and then there's another problem. And so I like what you said, that we shouldn't have to wait till a problem occurs. Someone has to wait. We know exactly what he wants us to do. We know exactly what he wants. I know what he wants me to do. No matter what I figure, try to figure it out or try to get away from it, I can't do it. Amen. I have to be here. <clears throat> Any comments on that? Great. Deacon Murray, you've been kind of quiet on me today. I'm sorry. Never mind. <laughs> <laughs> Verse 7, and, you know, it was a, there's only seven verses in this, uh, but uh, a lot was said in the seven. And in verse 7, it said, He shall not go out from the door of the tabernacle of the congregation, lest ye die, for the anointing oil of the Lord is upon you, and they did according to the word of Moses. I thought Pastor said, you know, if you go in the tabernacle, you don't know if you're going to come out alive. Amen. It's a tough situation. But what I do like it, and here we're going to go into some practical form. What I do like from here is that even though tragedy happened with Aaron, two sons, the others still followed the instructions of the Lord. And so when we have something that happens tragic in our lives, we shouldn't question God. That why, that why did you take my only son? Why did you do this? Deacon Mary, I see your hand. I see you're here. I'm going to let you get in. <laughs> amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. You know, this is uh, speaking to to leadership. Yeah. You know, verse 7, right? Right, Because we, we're talking about the two brothers that even, you, you know, saints can't do what they just want to do. Amen. Sir. Amen. Leaders definitely can't do what they just want to do because we're not only representing Christ, but we're 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 representing Christ in the sense of being that middleman, if you will, between the saints and God, or the unsaved and God. And so we have to even the more make sure that we're walking a straight and narrow path. We have to make sure even the more that we're doing and saying the correct things and living this lifestyle, not just saying about the lifestyle. And God here clearly shows that if we don't and we disrespect his order and his house, some things can come on us, including death. Amen. I really uh, like those uh, comments from Deacon uh, Mary said that leaders, <clears throat> we cannot do what we want to do. And this is what this as we you know, this is what this is about. When we do what we want to do, then there will be consequences, there will be judgment. We don't know when it's going to happen. But for sure it says in the Bible that it's going to happen. I don't want to wait and try to find out when it's going to happen. I, I don't want to be a part of that. And so, so many times we feel that we got away with something or we just decided, like Lot's daughters, Lot's wife, when they told her, don't look back, and she decided, I got to get me one more good look. Oh. And she looked back and that was it. He told her, don't do it. How many times did the, the Lord tell us, don't do that? Help us, Lord. Don't cheat on that time sheet. Come on. You know you wasn't there. Don't leave 15 minutes early and say you were there. Yes, and sir. then you want to know what happened. Okay, let's go to the practical point. Bigger, I mean, I'm Pastor Brown. Yes, yeah, so, you know, um, uh, what do I want to say? So, Oh yeah, but don't allow what happened to uh, nay that by you shy make you shy away from leadership either. Because what happens is people read a story like this and I don't want to do nothing in the church. <laughs> <laughs> but that's not what the case is. The case is is that every time God had 
uh, called somebody into his office, he always prepared them. Amen. He always anointed them, and he always was with them. It was only when uh, a person decided to stray outside of those boundaries is when uh, judgment came on them. So remember, Nadab and Baidu were set in place. Watch this. They were chosen by God. They were picked by God initially. God anointed them. God put them in place. But at a, at a certain point, we cannot get, and this is the lesson here, I think, with Alice, we cannot get so uh, relaxed in our place of leadership that we disregard understanding the cost of leadership Amen. and the price of leadership, as Deacon Murray was saying. And, and they may, we don't know, but you know, here, you know, they, 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 they did what they did, but don't let this, don't let you, don't let this be a, a lesson where I'm not going to be a director, I'm not going to be an auxiliary leader, I'm not going to be, you know, uh, God's going to get me. Well, get yourself together. Right. The Bible says sanctify yourself, because even when he called to himself, God would call them and say, hey, y'all go three days and sanctify yourself, then come unto me. Or right, seven days, sanctify yourself, then come unto me. So he's telling us there's a way. And the scripture says in Proverbs, uh, I believe, 14 chapter, there's a way that seems right to a man. That's right. But the ends there are the ways of death. Seems like I'm doing the right thing, like, you know, like I'm doing whatever. But God has given us an order, follow his order, trust in his order, walk in his order, walk in his obedience, and God will, God will be with you. And, that, and that's the point that we will, that's the other side of the story that I think we need to make in the lesson today, too. Amen. I, I like what Pastor said. Don't be discouraged. Because something like this, and don't run and say, well, I don't want to be there because remember what happened to this person. Get yourself together. Yeah. Do what God asks you to do. It's not hard. You know, you work on it, you work on it, you work on it, you get better. And, and, and sooner or later, you're not doing the things that you used to do. Amen. Amen. And that's, that's just it, you know. I remember 18 months ago, people said I was crazy for going to church because it was a virus. Well, maybe so. <laughs> well, I'm still here. Yeah. <laughs> and so I, I just want to thank everyone. I want to go over some of the practical, practical points. <clears throat> Number one is we should follow the Lord leading, not expect Him to follow us. Amen. And that's so so, so right that sometimes we think that everything should be the way we want. Number two is that God's judgment may not, may not be immediate, but we will have to give an account of ourselves, so we should never use grace as a license to sin. Amen. So we think that because we got away with, thank God, thank you for your grace and mercy. Thank you for you, you keep saying it. Thank you for your grace and mercy. I walk right out the door and say, I'm going to hit somebody in the head. No. <laughs> and then talking about, thank you for your grace and mercy. I already planned it. Oh, and so we should we say we should be a changed person. Amen. Amen. And that's Amen. what he's saying. Don't just use that as an excuse. Well, I just I went to God and asked him for forgiveness. Number three says, do not steal the glory that belong to God Amen. alone. <clears throat> I think in Genesis he said, I am a jealous God. Yeah. So he's like Pastor said, he does a whole lot for us. And so many times as I was reading the lesson, it said that. If we don't watch ourselves, we will start saying things. Think I see you got your mic ready. I'm gonna, you start saying things like, "I did this," right. and "I I have this," and "I have that," and we leave God out of it. We have nothing. We have done nothing. Nothing. Amen. Amen. And once we start doing that, we start becoming selfish. And as I said, as I read it earlier. They eventually, we just take God completely out the picture. Help us, Lord. I don't need you no more. I, you know, you see all this money I got and all this that this is this is because of me. Amen. He gave us all that wisdom and everything. Uh, did you have a comment? I know you did. Yeah, uh, Pastor and I had the privilege yesterday of sitting down and listening to uh, uh, <laughs> Bishop Gates yesterday I down in, the good one. I in know North Carolina, did. and you know he brought something like this up. Because he was talking about how beautiful the church was, because it was a church dedication, and he made a comment and he said, you know, I'm not saying something that's not out there in the world, you know, that's not live, I mean, you know, that wasn't live yesterday, but he said, there are some leaders that get something like this, get this awesome 
building or something great and literally act like it's them that did it and like God had nothing to do with it, you know? And so, you know, just the fact that we're talking about this, this lesson and yesterday he preached, a, that wasn't even the preached word, but it was the fact that he said it yesterday and now we're talking about it this morning because we do have to have our minds right and understand that no matter what, it, it doesn't matter if you're talking about just a, a, a pack of, a, a, a bundle of bananas that you bought out the store. Even though you might have walked in physically and done that and paid for it with your money, without God, you wouldn't have had the job, you wouldn't have had the mind, you wouldn't have had anything to even get to that point. Amen. 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 And we got to wrap up God. Just, just give, thank God. I, just remember that we did nothing. And, and I know it's God's word is true because you was in North Carolina talking about this, and we're here in Virginia talking about it. And so I kind of remind me of myself, I'm not one of those persons that like a lot of stuff. So people always tell me sometimes, well, you know, don't drink the water, it's not cold. Just give me a bottle of water. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm thank, I'm grateful that I got the water, you know. It don't have to have no ice in it. <laughs> but, you know, just be thankful. Do not steal the glory. Remember, just thank God for just giving you that. Uh, number four is that a Christian primary allegiance should be to the Lord, even above his family. And it says Leviticus 10, 4, and, and Luke 14 and 26. And so, to the Lord, we just put God first. God first. And, and so many times it's uh, uh, my house or my job, you know, I heard someone say that they they work 18 hours a day on some job or something like that. And they were sure they were going to get a promotion. And it's about wrecked them. Mm -hmm. They didn't get it. Jesus. God wasn't in that. You know, if, you do, if you're working so much at a job, you know, you know God can't, he can't be doing everything because you'd be too tired to go to church. So he, <laughs> the devil will take you right out to church. Yes, sir. Number five, we must respect God's judgment, trusting in his wisdom and goodness. And when I was reading Leviticus 10, if I, when I was reading that, I think I was reading it, chapter 9 in Leviticus, it was saying that the children of Israel, Israel was saying that God was unequal. You know, they, you know, like he, you know, he's, in other words, he's not even fat. And so he's, uh, I, I read the Bible, I read so much, I can't remember what I read. But he was saying that, okay, I'm going to show you about equal. I'm going to judge each, all of y'all equally. You got to be careful there because we all are sinful. Amen. And so we start thinking that if something happened to us, that it's unfair. Yeah. Well, you know, I, I. I, I didn't think it was fair when uh, I realized now it was for God's glory. When my mother passed away when I was eight, I could not see that. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. And so, but it made me a better person and a stronger person because a lot of people say that you can't make it without a mother and a father. You, you, you don't, you're bound to be a drug addict or something like that. But God had a different plan. God so, had so I didn't see it, but I thank God that. It went that way. Amen. Amen. Number six and last, the church leaders should be held to a high standard because they are example for other Christians. And I'm reading that is because the pastor gives us the word. And if he gives us the wrong word, not we're supposed to read this word ourselves also, but if I'm near in Christ and I come in here, and I get that wrong word, then I believe that. Uh -huh. I may believe that, I put it that way. So they're held to a, a different uh, <clears throat> standard. And I remember Pastor Brown thing was when I first went to the old church on Georgetown. He still says it, read it for yourself. Amen. Don't just take my word, read it for yourself. So many people do not read the Bible. They just bring it to church with them and sit in the church and and say, well, the pastor preached a good sermon and they don't know whether he missed the beat or skipped the beat or missed the word or not because they didn't read it themselves. <clears throat> I hope that something was said today that, that someone would be able to get something out of it. Uh, you know, it was a very good Sunday school lesson that deals with the consequences that can happen to us when we don't do things God's way. Amen. <clears throat> and at this time, we're going to get ready to prepare ourselves for the offer tour. We're going to ask, uh, we're short-handed, we're going to ask that uh, one of the deacons, a deacon, uh, I guess I get, can I say deacon elect? No. 
No. Hey. <laughs> uh, Deacon Cunningham cannot do it. I'll do it. Uh, we ask that everyone that is here can give at least five dollars, and we ask that everyone also can give at least twenty-five cents for the uh, scholarship fund, and that can be utilized by us. The only thing is that we would have to attend Sunday school three consecutive Sundays straight, so the pastor can sign off on it. Amen. 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 Every